Hello and welcome back. We've got Easter coming up quickly, so this week we're cooking hot cross buns. And here comes the recipe. So for those of you that are going to ask, can I use a stand mixer for this? Yes, you absolutely can and it's recommended, but for those of you that don't have a stand mixer, I'm going to be doing it by hand. So to start, just put a pinch of sugar in with your yeast and some of your water. Doesn't really matter how much here, just a little is needed. And we're just going to wait five minutes before we carry on with the rest of the recipe to get that yeast going. Now after five minutes has passed, we can start adding in all of our dry ingredients to our flour. So that's our spices, our salt and our sugar and the zest of one lemon. And remember when zesting lemons, make sure you're only zesting the actual yellow part of it. You don't want any of the white pith underneath as it's extremely bitter. Now give all your dry ingredients a quick whisk to thoroughly disperse them and you can add in your butter and we're going to use the rubbing in technique here which is just where you rub the butter and flour together between your fingertips and just keep going until you can no longer see any large lumps of butter and then we can start adding in our wet ingredients. So first up we'll put in one whole egg and I'll pick out all the shell from when you bodged the one handed egg crack and by now your yeast should be fully active and foaming so you can go and add that too. And then lastly, you can add your remaining water. Now grab yourself a wooden spoon and give this all a good mix together and it should be really sticky and thick like this. Now as is the case with most doughs, we're going to have to knead this for about 10 minutes and to help us do that we're going to use one of these bench scrapers if you don't have a stand mixer and we're going to do a slightly different kneading technique than you might be used to with normal bread dough. So start by dumping all of your bun dough out onto a work surface and then fold it all into itself until you're left with a rough ball. Next up you're going to spread it out into a large circle and then begin folding all of the outside edges towards the centre. And then you're just going to spread it out again, fold it all into the centre and repeat this process for about 10 minutes or until you've got a smooth elastic dough. After about 10 minutes of kneading, you're going to want to add your dried fruit. So just spread it out into a large circle again, put your dried fruit on top and continue the folding process just until it's evenly incorporated. And it is traditional to use mixed peel in this recipe, however I prefer it without. And if you do want to use it, just replace about a third of your sultanas with the mixed peel. You could also soak your sultanas for 24 hours in something like rum, however seeing as children will be eating these ones, I'm not going to do that today. Anyway, so now all of your dried fruit is incorporated, you can add it back to a large bowl. I'm just going to use the one that I made my dough in in the first place. And you want to cover this loosely and put somewhere warm. And just leave to rise until double in size. This should take about an hour to an hour and a half. Once double in size, you're going to want to do something called knocking back. And this is just where you expel the excess air in any large air pockets. And to do this, we're just going to give it a quick knead. So dump it back out onto your work surface and we'll just fold it back into the middle a few times like we did before. So now it's time to weigh out our individual buns here. So I'm going to use 90 grams per bun. You can go bigger or smaller if you like, but 90 grams seems to be about right for me. Now this dough is still extremely sticky, so make sure you heavily flour a work surface. Then weigh out each bun and put it onto your flour. Next up, get yourself a lined baking sheet. I'm using a large one here because I'm going to put about 12 buns on this. Now dust some more flour over your portion dough and we're going to begin shaping by just folding it all underneath itself, trying to create a smooth top. If you do have any sultanas sticking out the top here, make sure to pull them out as they will burn in the oven. Next up, roll around on a work surface until a rough circle and place onto your baking sheet. Now you're going to want to keep putting these on at a distance of about one and a half to two centimeters as we do want them to stick together so we get that tear away bun but we don't want them to form just one huge hot cross bun once they've proved. So once they're all trayed up, cover loosely again and return somewhere warm for about 30 minutes. Now onto the cross part of our hot cross bun, here's the recipe and there's not a lot to say here except to throw it all into a bowl and give it a good whisk until it's smooth and then we're going to transfer that all into a piping bag and just keep for later. Now after 30 minutes your bun should have doubled in size again and just about be touching. So carefully uncover them. Now pipe lines of your cross dough across all of your buns to create the crosses. 
Once that's done, you'll want to put these into a preheated oven at 190 degrees centigrade or 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 minutes or until golden brown. So whilst my hot cross buns are cooking, I'm going to make a simple glaze to go over the top of them when they come out. I'm using marmalade here, but you could also use golden syrup or just simply equal quantities of water and sugar boiled together. But for this one, we're going to take a couple of tablespoons of marmalade with a couple of tablespoons of water. And I'm just going to heat this in the microwave until hot and give it a little mix until all of the marmalade is dissolved. Now just put to one side until your buns are cooked. After 25 minutes, your buns should be ready. So take them out of the oven and immediately brush them with the glaze you just made. You want to do this whilst they're still hot as it will allow it to soak in rather than just sit on the top and be fairly generous here. And as you can see it adds a nice shine and adds some orange flavour to it. And that's about all there is to it. Now these do freeze really well so don't be afraid to make these now ready for Easter and you can just defrost them when you're ready to eat them. And there really is only one way to eat these. So let's get this toasted, spread with a healthy amount of butter and taste it. Perfect. See you next week.